I would build a house there. I always wanted a house in the mountains when I was a kid. I wanted a house in the mountains. Prepare to be astonished by Robert Redford's latest bombshells. The legendary actor's contributions to American cinema have always been remarkable, but his recent revelations have taken everyone by storm. From his unexpected announcement of retirement to his candid admissions of regret, Redford has left fans reeling with each intimate conversation. But the surprises don't stop there. Brace yourself as Redford bravely shatters his long-standing image with a shocking admission about his childhood. Join us to dive into the jaw-dropping revelations of the 87-year-old icon, Robert Redford. In his more than 60-year career, Robert Redford recently made a shocking statement. Specifically, in a candid interview with his grandson Dylan, he shared his decision to retire from acting after completing two final film projects. The announcement made public in a heartfelt conversation posted online provided fans with insight into Redford's evolving passions and motivations. Throughout the interview, Redford's reverence for storytelling permeated every word, emphasizing the profound impact that narratives have had on his life and career. Reflecting on his journey as an actor, he expressed a deep-seated appreciation for the craft, but admitted to feeling a growing sense of restlessness. I'm getting tired of acting, he confessed to his grandson, revealing a longing to return to his roots as a director and artist. Redford's affinity for painting emerged as a central theme, underscoring his desire to explore avenues beyond the constraints of the silver screen. When Dylan inquired about his interest in painting, Redford's response was unequivocal. Yeah, a lot, and a lot lately because I'm getting tired of acting. This candid admission sheds light on the internal struggle faced by an artist grappling with the passage of time and the evolution of creative impulses. The octogenarian actor's decision to step away from acting was not solely motivated by a waning passion for the craft, but also by a desire for autonomy and creative freedom. I'm an impatient person, Redford confessed, alluding to the repetitive nature of film production and the meticulous process of multiple takes. At the age of 80, he found solace in the simplicity of pursuing his artistic endeavors independently, liberated from the constraints of external dependencies. Returning to sketching held a special allure for Redford, offering him a sanctuary where he could reconnect with his artistic instincts on his own terms. It'd give me more satisfaction because I'm not dependent on anybody, he explained, highlighting the intrinsic joy derived from the act of creation itself. For Redford, the decision to prioritize sketching symbolized a return to authenticity, reclaiming a sense of agency over his creative pursuits. In a poignant revelation, Robert Redford disclosed his intention to bid farewell to his illustrious acting career. With two final acting projects, Our Souls at Night alongside the incomparable Jane Fonda and Old Man with a Gun, Featuring an ensemble cast, including Casey Affleck and Sissy Spacek, currently in the works, Redford's decision marks the end of an era in Hollywood. The news of Redford's impending retirement comes as a bittersweet milestone for fans who have marveled at his on-screen presence for decades. Yet, the actor's resolve to embark on this new chapter with grace and determination speaks volumes about his unwavering commitment to artistic integrity and personal fulfillment. The impending release of Our Souls at Night and Old Man with a Gun serves as a poignant swan song for Redford, offering audiences a final glimpse into the talent and charisma that have defined his career. As these projects draw to a close, Redford intends to bid a fond farewell to the world of acting, embracing a future devoted solely to the craft of directing. Redford's directorial prowess has long been celebrated within the industry, earning him widespread acclaim and accolades, including an Academy Award for Best Director for his poignant drama, Ordinary People, in 1980. His directorial vision has left an indelible mark on the cinematic landscape, elevating storytelling to new heights of emotional depth and resonance. Despite his decision to step away from acting, Redford's creative spirit remains undiminished, 
fueled by a relentless passion for storytelling and a boundless imagination. His recent starring role in the 2015 film A Walk in the Woods, a poignant exploration of friendship and self-discovery set against the backdrop of the Appalachian Trail, reaffirmed his status as a luminary of independent cinema. Redford's storied career has been punctuated by moments of triumph and recognition, including a well-deserved honor from the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences in 2002, commemorating his contributions to the art of filmmaking. However, despite his retirement statements, Robert Redford later admitted his regret about his impulsiveness. He acknowledged that it was a mistake to declare his most recent feature, The Old Man and the Gun, as his swan song. Redford's candid admission came amidst the buzz surrounding the premiere of the David Lowery-directed film at the Paris Theater in New York City, where he spoke with Fox News about his evolving perspective on his storied career. Dispelling the notion of an imminent departure from the silver screen, Redford expressed a newfound reluctance to categorically label The Old Man and the Gun as his final film. Well, I think it was a mistake to say that this was my last film, he conceded, hinting at the complexities inherent in navigating the twilight of a legendary career. His decision to reconsider retirement stemmed from a desire to prioritize the integrity of the film itself and the collective efforts of the cast and crew involved. Reflecting on his initial declaration, Redford conceded that the public announcement may have inadvertently overshadowed the film's merits, diverting attention away from the rich tapestry of storytelling woven by its creators. I think I could have just quietly slipped out of acting to concentrate on my own category, he mused, alluding to his enduring passion for directing and other creative pursuits. By publicly addressing his intentions, Redford inadvertently shifted the focus from the film's narrative to his personal career trajectory, a realization that prompted him to reassess his approach. However, whether Old Man and the Gun marks the denouement of Redford's acting journey or merely a chapter in an ongoing narrative, its significance reverberates far beyond the confines of the silver screen. Redford, a titan of the industry, has indelibly shaped the landscape of cinema, leaving an indelible mark on subsequent generations of actors and filmmakers. Among those profoundly influenced by his legacy is Casey Affleck, Redford's co-star in Old Man and the Gun. Affleck, embodying the role of Detective John Hunter, tasked with pursuing Redford's enigmatic character, embodies the reverence and admiration felt by many towards the cinematic icon. In an interview with Fox News, Affleck eloquently articulated the profound impact of working alongside Redford, describing the experience as nothing short of a dream come true. He cited the allure of collaborating with director David Lowery, known for his discerning eye and penchant for assembling talented ensembles as a primary draw to the project. However, it was the opportunity to share the screen with Redford that proved truly transformative for Affleck, underscoring the profound influence that Redford exerts over his peers and successors. Affleck's sentiments resonate with a sentiment shared by countless actors who have had the privilege of collaborating with Redford throughout his storied career. To work alongside a legend of Redford's stature is not merely a professional milestone, but a deeply personal and profound experience, one that leaves an indelible imprint on the hearts and minds of all involved. For Affleck, the experience of working with Redford transcends the realm of career achievements, evoking a sense of gratitude and fulfillment that defies simple articulation. To share the screen with a luminary of Redford's caliber is to partake in a legacy that extends far beyond individual performances or projects. It is to participate in a tradition of excellence and artistry that has defined Hollywood for generations. Putting aside the unclear decisions in Robert Redford's career, recently, he has revealed the obscure corners of his life that few people know. Before he graced the silver screen with his magnetic presence, Redford's formative years were fraught with challenges and hardships. 
Growing up amidst the backdrop of a gritty urban landscape, he found himself drawn into the orbit of a street gang, seeking camaraderie and validation amidst the chaos of adolescence. Yet, beneath the bravado and bravura, lay a vulnerable young boy grappling with the weight of his own insecurities and fears. Redford's recollections of his time in the gang are both harrowing and poignant, revealing a stark reality marked by violence, recklessness, and the constant threat of danger. In one particularly chilling anecdote, he recounts a near-fatal dare that pushed him to the brink of mortality, a stark reminder of the perilous path he treads in his youth. Yet, it was in the crucible of adversity that Redford discovered a profound truth about himself, that courage is not the absence of fear, but the willingness to confront it head on. The incident served as a catalyst for introspection and self-discovery, prompting Redford to confront the demons that lurked within his own psyche. In the crucible of adversity, he found the resilience to chart a new course, one defined by courage, determination, and an unwavering commitment to rise above the circumstances that threatened to engulf him. As Redford grappled with the dual forces of darkness and light, he came to a profound realization that in life we are faced with choices, each carrying its own set of consequences. Confronted with the stark reality of his own mortality, Redford made a conscious decision to transcend the limitations of his past, embracing a future defined by possibility, hope, and the transformative power of redemption. As a teenager navigating the turbulent waters of adolescence, Redford found himself ensnared in the allure of a street gang, a surrogate family bound by a code of loyalty and survival. Yet beneath the veneer of camaraderie lay a world fraught with peril, where petty theft and acts of delinquency served as currency in the harsh landscape of urban life. The revelation of stolen jewelry in the boot of a car marked a pivotal moment for Redford, a brush with the law that threatened to derail his future before it had even begun. It was only through the intervention of his father, Charlie, that Redford narrowly escaped the clutches of legal repercussions, his innocence preserved by a father's steadfast resolve and unwavering belief in his son's character. Yet, Redford's journey was fraught with challenges long before his encounter with the law. At the tender age of ten, he confronted the specter of polio, a debilitating disease that threatened to extinguish the flame of his youth. The diagnosis plunged Redford into a world of physical agony and emotional turmoil, testing the limits of his resilience and fortitude. As he lay confined to his bed, his body racked with pain, it was the unwavering love and devotion of his mother that provided solace and sustenance in the face of adversity. Her tender ministrations, a daily ritual of comfort and care, served as a lifeline for Redford. And for Robert Redford's life story, there are certain chapters that remain shrouded in mystery, including the reasons behind his separation from his wife of 27 years, Lola. Their union, which bore witness to the joys of parenthood with the birth of four children, was also marked by profound tragedy with the loss of their first son, Scott, to sudden infant death syndrome in 1959. This devastating event cast a shadow over their lives, forever altering the trajectory of their family dynamic and reshaping the contours of their shared existence. While Redford's autobiography may refrain from delving into the intricacies of his marital dissolution, the specter of grief looms large as a silent witness to the complexities of love, loss, and resilience. The profound impact of Scott's untimely passing undoubtedly reverberated throughout their relationship, testing the bonds of their marriage and challenging the resilience of their shared foundation. Despite the inherent challenges they faced, Redford and Lola's love endured, a testament to the strength of their connection and the enduring power of commitment. Yet, as the years unfolded and life's myriad pressures exerted their influence, the strains of their shared journey began to manifest, ultimately leading to a parting of ways that remain shrouded in the mists of private reflection.
In the wake of their separation, Redford found solace and companionship in the arms of German artist Sibylla Zagars, with whom he forged a new chapter of love and partnership. Their union is marked by a shared passion for art and a mutual appreciation for life's beauty. Elsewhere, Robert Redford once admitted something interesting related to the Sundance Film Festival. As he reflects on the latest iteration of the festival, Redford is unequivocal in his assessment. This year's event represents the pinnacle of achievement, a testament to the unwavering commitment to excellence that has defined Sundance's legacy. Yet, Amidst the accolades and acclaim, a sobering reality looms large. The festival's exponential growth threatens to undermine its very essence. In a candid acknowledgement of the festival's evolution, Redford acknowledges that while the quality of the films showcased at Sundance has never been higher, the sheer size of the event has become a cause for concern. Amidst the throngs of eager cinephiles and industry insiders, whispers of discontent ripple through the crowd, echoing the sentiments of many who find themselves grappling with the challenges of navigating a festival that has grown beyond its humble origins. It's not the films, Redford asserts with conviction. The quality, he said, is better than ever. Indeed, Sundance has long been revered as a breeding ground for cinematic innovation a platform where emerging voices find a platform to shine, and established auteurs push the boundaries of storytelling. Yet, as the festival has expanded in scope and scale, so too have the logistical challenges that accompany such growth. Redford's concern is palpable as he acknowledges the growing chorus of discontent surrounding the festival's overcrowding and logistical hurdles. The once charming streets of Park City now teem with a sea of humanity, as attendees jostle for space amidst the bustling thoroughfares and labyrinthine venues. Navigating the festival has become an exercise in patience and perseverance, with traffic snarls and overcrowded screenings testing the fortitude of even the most seasoned festival-goers. In the face of these challenges, Redford is resolute in his determination to preserve the integrity of the festival he holds dear. We're going to have to look at that, he asserts, signaling a willingness to confront the issues head-on and explore innovative solutions to ensure that Sundance remains accessible, inclusive, and true to its founding principles. For Redford, the festival's ascent is rooted in a complex interplay of cultural, economic, and technological forces. He attributes much of the festival's growth to the shifting dynamics of the entertainment business, where filmmakers and actors increasingly sought opportunities beyond the confines of traditional Hollywood studios. As the industry landscape underwent a seismic shift, Sundance emerged as a beacon of artistic freedom and creative expression, attracting talent from around the world in search of innovative storytelling and groundbreaking projects. Yet Redford is quick to acknowledge the role of globalization in shaping the festival's trajectory. As Sundance gained traction on the international stage, it became a magnet for artists and industry insiders from every corner of the globe, transforming Park City into a bustling hub of creativity and collaboration. With the influx of global talent came a cascade of ancillary industries, from paparazzi to fashion houses, each seeking to capitalize on the festival's burgeoning popularity. Redford's wry humor shines through as he recounts the unintended consequences of Sundance's newfound fame. The arrival of well-known actors inevitably drew the attention of the paparazzi, whose presence signaled a shift in the festival's atmosphere. What began as a celebration of independent cinema soon became a spectacle of celebrity culture, complete with red carpet premieres and glamorous after parties. Redford chuckles at the irony of it all, acknowledging the absurdity of a festival founded on countercultural ideals becoming a playground for the glitterati. Yet, amidst the glitz and glamour, Redford finds reason for optimism. He notes with a touch of irony that the recession, far from detracting from the festival's allure, actually helped to temper its excesses. As economic uncertainty gripped the nation, the frivolity and extravagance that had come to define Sundance were reined in, 
allowing the festival to refocus on its core mission of championing independent voices and fostering artistic innovation. The exponential rise in attendance at Sundance, fueled by the allure of discovering the next breakout filmmaker or witnessing the birth of a cinematic masterpiece, is a testament to the festival's enduring appeal. From Ryan Coogler's powerful debut with Fruitvale Station to Damien Chazelle's electrifying Whiplash, Sundance has served as a launching pad for countless careers and a crucible of creativity for filmmakers seeking to defy convention and challenge the status quo. Yet, as the festival has expanded in scope and scale, so too have the challenges it faces. Redford's concerns are palpable as he contemplates the impact of overcrowding and development on the festival's ethos. The once quaint streets of Park City, once a haven for independent artists and aspiring auteurs, now teem with throngs of attendees, their presence threatening to suffocate the very spirit that defines Sundance. At some point, if both those things continue to grow, they're going to begin to choke each other, Redford muses, acknowledging the delicate balance between growth and preservation. As he grapples with the existential questions facing the festival, Redford finds himself at a crossroads, forced to confront the possibility of sacrificing the festival's heart and soul in the name of progress. Ideas swirl in Redford's mind as he ponders the path forward for Sundance. Should the festival remain steadfast in its commitment to its founding principles, risking stagnation and irrelevance? Or should it embrace change, adapting to the realities of a rapidly evolving industry while staying true to its core values? You have a couple of choices, Redford reflects. You can go hard and say we're going to stop it. Or you say, well, if you want to keep it going, we can't keep it going the way things are. It's a dilemma that weighs heavily on Redford's shoulders, a testament to the profound sense of responsibility he feels toward preserving the legacy of a festival that has become synonymous with independent cinema. One such idea that has taken root in his mind is the notion of restructuring the festival into distinct sections, each dedicated to a specific genre or format. In this proposed scenario, Redford envisions a more streamlined and focused approach to programming, with narrative features showcased during the traditional January time frame and documentaries given their own dedicated spotlight in February. By segregating the festival into distinct sections, Redford hopes to alleviate some of the congestion and overcrowding that has become synonymous with Sundance in recent years. I don't know whether that works or not, Redford admits with characteristic humility. That's just an idea that's worming in my head. Despite his uncertainty, Redford's willingness to entertain bold and unconventional ideas underscores his commitment to reimagining the festival's format in order to better serve the needs of filmmakers, industry professionals, and audiences alike. The proposed restructuring of the festival into distinct sections represents a departure from the traditional model of cramming a diverse array of films, documentaries, shorts, and other content into a single, frenetic 10-day period. By providing dedicated time and space for each genre to shine, Redford hopes to foster a more immersive and curated experience for attendees, while also providing filmmakers with a platform that highlights the unique merits of their work. Yet Redford is keenly aware that such a radical shift would require careful consideration and planning. The logistical challenges of coordinating multiple sections of the festival across different months, as well as the potential impact on attendance and industry participation, are factors that must be taken into account. What do you think about Robert Redford's recent admissions? Leave us your comments in the section below. We hope you have found this helpful video. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you like it. Thank you for watching this and see you in the next videos. Goodbye.